Hello, and welcome to Humble Stature. Today I'm reviewing another article of mine, this time on the critical race, on critical race theory is corrupting Buddhism, which is quite controversial. And I've got a lot of pushback and different feedback from people, um, especially within the Buddhist community. And, um, you know, my main thing is I feel like a lot of this isn't being said, and um, I feel like I'm the guy to say it. So, uh, you know, I've kind of written my thoughts down here, and we can kind of go over it and let me know what you think in the comments. So here we go. So honestly, I really think, I was really thinking that I could just go along my Buddhist way and avoid politics, except for just a little sprinkled on top for flavor. But it seems like it's not meant to be. Lately, I've been strongly considering joining a Buddhist chaplaincy program to become a chaplain in a hospital or military. This has come with one major problem. The universities are infested with an ideology that I find so dishonest and harmful to our country that in all truth, I may have to pursue a different path entirely. I don't think I can really avoid politics without feeling like I am doing a disservice to those that f who follow me. So even though humble stature is primarily devoted to spirituality and Buddhism, it's time to speak up. I believe that leftists are racist and seek to make everything about race. And, you know, even with the racist thing, it's not so much as in, I think from the other side, it's more like if you're racist or have some sort of racist inclinations, you therefore must be evil. But in my view, it's really a matter of if you're breaking stuff into and perceiving life through the prism of race and then saying that some races are therefore better or worse than others, which I believe that this is claiming, which is why you have to try to fix that, then um, that perpetuates racism instead of having a common goal that everyone would be working towards and having more of a introspective personal thing, because obviously if you have trauma from the past, um, you know, that's going to affect you in the present. And so going inside and dealing with that is really what allows you to free yourself from whatever trauma, whatever stuff has happened from the past. And a lot of this trying to fix things externally through governmental power, um, as someone who leans more to the right, um, I see it as the wrong way to go about it because fundamentally you, I don't think, you know, people have so many different aspects in which they're advantaged and disadvantaged, privileged and not privileged. And to go through society and start trying to divide this up and comparing and creating a hierarchy, I believe creates more division than it does unity. And so the thing is really to get more connected to people, to love people, to do our own inner work, and to prepare to kind of put out a um, more unifying message, I guess. That's how I put it. So they believe that unless there is an equal outcome among all races, it's a sign that there is systematic oppression. This view is called critical race theory, and it's infiltrated, infiltrated not only the colleges, but also Buddhism in America. There are five Buddhist colleges in America. All of them not only teach, but believe that this is the correct lens from which to view the world. In a recent letter written by the Institute of Buddhist Studies, the president and dean talk about anti-Asian violence, in which they cite the murder of six Asian women in Atlanta, neglecting the fact that this man also killed two white people in his attack. Actually, I believe they're white. One of them might have actually been mixed, too. I was trying to just find it online because... They emphasize actually the Asian part so much that it's almost impossible to even just get accurate information about who was actually killed because it doesn't go with the narrative. Um, this article goes on to say, whereas these events have been, uh, have been receiving more and more media attention of late, we understand that they are part of a centuries-long pattern of white supremacy in this country that has resulted in both individual and state-sponsored acts of cruelty towards Asian Americans and Asian American Buddhists. It's amazing to me how even when white people are being killed due to a crime known to have been committed by a man with a sexual addiction, as the news is calling it, um, it's still it is uh, it's still due to white supremacy. And the thing is, even in this story, apparently he went to a number of strip clubs and they'd like denied him access and. You know, there there was actually armed guards at the strip club, which is why he didn't end up, you know, trying to shoot anybody there. But then, of course, when you go in a place where no one else has a gun, much easier to shoot people. And that's what seemed to happen here. So, this article is uh, not only one um, is not only one of the first things on the IBS website. 
um, but also on the Buddhist Churches of America website, which oversees all Buddhist ecclesiastic certifications for Buddhist chaplains within America, meaning if they don't like you, you can't become a Buddhist chaplain. Since it's related, I guess I might as well also address Black Lives Matter, BLM. Uh, this was a massive thing for all the Buddhist universities as well, who unanimously believe that everything negative done to black people is because of white supremacy and institutionalized racism. I guess it's a bit of a generalization. I guess you could have ones that don't believe that, but that still is the main narrative. Um, personally, I believe BLM is a shill for the Democrat Party and that they actually perpetuate racism instead of healing anything. This view led to both a large amount of support and people unfriending me. Eventually, this set the foundation for why I started a Facebook group called The Buddhist Right, which I have since changed to a group for humble stature. To me, all this made it crystal clear that it's near impossible to talk about anyone, talk, to talk to anyone who holds critical race theory to be true because it will always, because they will always see you as racist and nothing else. And, um, you know, I've talked with a number of these people and it really is a matter of just, you know, you're wrong and you're so blinded because of this and it just goes into ad hominem attacks or it's all, you know, about your character that you are, you know, weak morally and therefore that's why you believe what you believe and there couldn't possibly be any validity to your experience, only to the experience of the, I guess, academic world really. Because even when I, you know, I grew up in LA and I, I know that there is racism in America. I believe that there are parts that are probably more racist, but as far as LA is concerned, I mean, I've experienced it far more in the other direction as far as even black people being racist towards white people than I have even, you know, whites towards blacks. Did I say that right? Blacks towards whites, whites towards blacks. Anyway, and so um, that's where a lot of my, you know, I mean, I have a number of stories, but I don't think I'll get into it here. But, um, you know, just saying this, I know I could basically be canceled, attacked, um, a number of things because people feel so strongly about these issues um, because there is really a culture war going on in the US and um, you know if anything I think to be able to speak about this stuff you know it, it really does take courage because the fact is you could lose your job maybe not get hired maybe like I said I want to go to different schools and you can't so you know who's really being persecuted here who's the one that really is having their freedoms taken away um, you know, I mean, obviously there's places that are less liberal than Los Angeles, and perhaps things are different there. But as far as I can see here, you know, um, it's uh, quite different than what's being, you know, talked about in academic environments. Okay, so um, I've always had friends of every race, and race does exist, but I've always lived by and encouraged others to live by, judging others by their character by whether or not they are kind and compassionate. Tolerance of others is a Buddhist value. And uh, what much of the left misses is that they don't tolerate differences of opinion. They don't see people as being humans who make mistakes and need love and understanding regardless. One of my favorite examples of this is um, the black musician, uh, Daryl Davis, who used to meet with the KKK members and just have a heart to heart with them. He showed them that he was kind and had similar values and wasn't to be feared. This type of work is amazing and honestly one of uh, the things we massively need uh, more of in this country. Same thing with Daryl Davis. He actually did a um, another um, like interview or something um, where he was talking about how it's actually harder to talk to the leftists than it is to the KKK, which tells you something about how narrow-minded a lot of these people are with their beliefs. Um, it's just everything always comes down to, you know, victimhood, and it's it's very toxic in my view, which is why I wrote this. To give a Buddhist example of this, there um, was a time when someone who um, ran his own Buddhist media company messaged me because I was going to talk with a man who was famous for being a, a Nazi Buddhist. He urged me that I would be guilty of by association if I talked to him. Or let him into my group. However, much like Daryl Davis, my point of view has always been that um, if he does hold these views and says something I disagree with, I'll say something and we can talk about it. Keep in mind here 
and I'm 33% Jewish, and I believe Nazism is completely wrong. But nonetheless, this Nazi Buddhist was very, um, I'm going to say sincere, in wanting to learn and spread Buddhism. People are so quick to judge and then hate people they don't understand. Myself and so many um, of my white friends all have horror stories where they've been accused of being racist or being told that they're bad for being white. And nowadays, everything a white person does is considered to be part of some grand um, conspiracy plan in which all white people must be continually punished. And I, for one, am not going to stand by without saying anything. And that's like the leftist point of view, obviously, but I don't think like society as a whole has gotten that bad, but it's moving there. Um, just to reiterate here, I don't care what race someone is and accept everyone, even those who hold views, the views I'm criticizing here. The issue is they refuse to let me and others who think like me to live peacefully under the law and can't help but push their agenda not only in colleges but in elementary schools and other places where the students here um, don't have the students there don't have the ability to defend themselves. And this actually the reason I said this here is because I mean I was talking to my father and um, she he has a friend who has a kid and basically you know they were teaching about you know, white privilege and all this stuff into the class. And then after the class, basically, this, the black and the Mexican kid, there was two of them, end up beating up his child, um, you know, because, of course, white privilege. Um, you know, and there's just so many things, especially with the children. My sister also, too, was telling me another thing about one of her friends um, at work. And uh, it was, you know, it's just unbelievable. Um in college, I only had um, my grades. Uh, in college, I not only had my grades affected due to my political beliefs, which I have direct proof of. Which, by the way, I so this was in actually economics class, and um, I was really big more on the free economy, and she was more about Keynesian and stuff. And there was an extra credit assignment. It was just basically filling out a front and back paper, and um, I worked on it with this other girl. And we basically, we had the exact same answers. There's no difference because it was quite simple questions. And I turned in my paper and she turned in hers. She got an A and I got a B. And this has been pretty much the way it's always been for me throughout college whenever I speak up about politics. And, um, you know, it's just part of life. I mean, it's unfortunate, really. Um, but if, so anyway, continuing from that. But I've had people throw trash into my car and been yelled at. I've believe that the reason I was not accepted into the Masters of Divinity program at the college I got my bachelor's from, University of the West, was because of my political beliefs. Lastly, but not least, I was also impeached as a president of the student government at that college because they claimed I was racist. Among other things, that was really actually a complicated situation, but one of the things they threw at me was being racist, and this whole situation was quite out of spite because it was literally the last week that I was president, and um, I've been president for a year. So, they were pissed. Anyway, um, which was probably also a factor in not being accepted back. Um, this claim that I was racist also happened to coincide with me coming off of a long-term relationship with an Asian and a black girl. Because, of course, if you date someone of a different race, you have friends of a different race, you love people of all races, and you try to help them as best you can in every single way, you're still a racist if you don't believe in white supremacy. And so that's why I threw that in there. All in all, this is an issue that I person that is personal for me and does affect my life and the life of my friends, which is why I feel like I need to say something. Um, I value the truth, and the truth is love and understanding are what leads to healing, not the vilification <clears throat> and polarization we are seeing today. To conclude, I just want to thank anyone, everyone um, who read this, and uh, feel free to let me know what you think about this on YouTube, Facebook, or Instagram. May you all be happy, peaceful, and liberated. So, yep, yeah, that's it. Um, you know, this uh, this topic has really kind of been, um, you know, after trying, because the whole reason this came up is because I was trying to apply to colleges again, and I just realized morally I can't do it, that there's too much of a disconnect to apply to the Buddhist path. And as someone who's deeply Buddhist, was a monk, and did so much meditation, to come to that conclusion has been really tough, and that's why I decided to put this out, even though it's quite public and it's personal, and maybe even some people will feel turned off by it. Um, 
you know, my original intention with Whole Humble Stature was to kind of try to veer away from politics a little bit more and stick more to Buddhism. But, um, you know, here in the West right now, they're so deeply intertwined that a lot of what people are struggling, I believe, is a lot of this. It, it overlaps with philosophy, which then overlaps with Buddhism and spirituality and all this stuff. And so it has to be addressed. And, um, you know, I'm going to get into other topics. Um, besides this one, I wrote one about, um, you know, my kind of position on the politics in Myanmar, which I've already posted. And I'll probably post one too, more on the sexism, patriarchy type of issues um, and other stuff that's, I guess, more controversial. Um, but, you know, it's really not the focus. At the end of the day, ultimately meditating and having a spiritual practice, going to meditation and looking within yourself and letting go of anger, hatred, greed, and delusion is what it's about. And um, so, uh, yeah, I hope you found this interesting. Um, I also have a new website now, as you can tell from the change in design. So just humblestature.com. And uh, I'm going to continue to keep growing and keep uh, putting out articles. And so thank you.